We've made our fair share of videos going over the Toronto Maple Leafs and the situation that's going to happen next year when some of these guys are going to need extensions. We've talked a ton about Austin Matthews. Hit him with a four like Austin Matthews is in a position where, as one of the top players in the entire National Hockey League, he is walking right up to free agent status. However, of course, the Maple Leafs don't have the option to re-sign Matthews until later this year, but when it comes to the situation with his contract, he expires in 2023-2024, and there's a lot of discourse talking about how the Leafs should re-sign him as soon as they can, how they should give him as much money as he wants because Austin Matthews is the savior of Toronto. How, if there is some sort of inkling that Matthews does not want to stay with the Maple Leafs, he could just walk right up to free agency and take whatever money is available in that market. Is it Arizona? Is it San Jose? An LA Kings team or an Anaheim team in California that is shelling out money to this guy? Who really knows? But one thing's for sure, Austin Matthews has definitely dominated a lot of the discourse surrounding the Maple Leafs and their contract situation. This is why, in this video, I wanted to go over a name that is also in a similar situation, Although his name is not Austin Matthews, this is a guy that, at the time of recording this audio, has more goals than Matthews. He has fewer points, but he is still right there as one of the top producers on the Maple Leafs. Let's head over to 2014 and talk about the Maple Leafs and their first round pick, William Nylander. The reason we're talking about Nylander today is because, as we had said, his contract expires at the end of the 2024 season. He's making $6.9 million a year, and he's 26 years old this season with a 45-point in 41 game campaign. He's got 22 goals, which leads the Maple Leafs, and his 45 points are two behind Matthews for third on the squad. Take a look at the numbers right here. Nylander is on pace for 90 points on the year and 44 goals. You thought his last season was amazing? 80 points in 81 games played with 34 goals on top of that? You thought the 30 goals in 68 games that he had a few seasons ago was pretty good. Well, Nylander is showing off to everybody today that the sentiment that his contract at 6.9 was kind of a steal might be a little bit understating just how talented of a player he really is. This is why when you talk about the Matthews extension that in which is able to be signed later this year, you also have to talk about Nylander. Because where Matthews is going to be demanding, let's say, something in the $13 million range, maybe 12.5, something in that McDavid McKinnon territory, or maybe even superseding that, William Nylander is probably going to get something a lot more than $6.9 million a year. Just a hunch. And it's not even just me that's going out there and talking about this. Let's go over onto TSN Overdrive, because what Darren Dreger did was he had himself a segment where he was brought onto the show, going over the Nylander situation and what things could be looking like for Toronto if they decide to take these contract negotiations on later this year. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to the audio if you want to listen to Drager's radio hit, but what I'll also leave a link to in the description is this article on NHLTradeRumors.me. What they did was they summarized pretty much what it was that Drager said, NHL Rumors, Nylander is getting into Marner territory for his next contract. Take a look at what Dreger says over here. He says, Nylander is probably getting up to Marner territory for his next contract. That would mean Nylander's play will have earned him a $5 million AAV increase from his current deal. Now, just in case you needed the refresher, Mitch Marner is a very expensive player, one of the most expensive players in the entire league. I believe he's the top winger? No, he's not. He's second top, I believe. Second overall in terms of wingers because Artemi Panarin is making 11.5. But Mitch Marner is making $10.9 million a season till the end of 2025. His contract expires in the same year that I believe John Tavares expires. And Marner is a guy who I would pretty much say in my mind is a de facto 100-point player. He had 97 points in 72 games played last year, which would have been on pace for over 100. 
The seasons before that, he posted back-to-back 67-point years in 55 and 59 games, respectively. So that's also a 90 plus 100 even point pace. The season before that, in 2018-19, 94 points, 82 games played. So this is a guy that I feel really comfortable saying is a 100 point caliber player who just hasn't hit 100 points yet. Even this season, the guy's on pace for 98 points as he's got 49 points in 41 games played so far. Mitch Marner is one of the top-paid players and one of the top-paid wingers in the NHL for a reason. He's very talented. But the point that Draeger is making is that William Nylander's play has sort of put him in that Marner territory in terms of overall talent. Nylander has been as good or just better than Marner and Matthews this season. And then the article talks about the points. Though Nylander's play helps the Maple Leafs this season and possibly next, there have been rumors that the team could even trade him before next season if there is no progress on a Matthews extension. Nylander and Matthews' contracts are both up at the end of the next season, and they both become UFAs. The Maple Leafs are discussing locking Michael Bunting up long-term, which will require even more cap. It almost seems inevitable, this article says, that Nylander won't be a member of the Maple Leafs for much longer. And so what I wanted to do was ask you in the comment section below, do you think this idea is more likely to transpire than not? I think it makes sense. Like, in theory, okay, if the Maple Leafs are focusing on bunting, they're probably going to focus on Matthews too. The odd man out is William Nylander, who is going to have a huge pay raise, much higher than the magnitude as to which Matthews' contract is going to increase. And then there's the bunting thing to consider as well, right? Nylander, if he's going to get something in the maybe 10.9 to $11.2 million range, is probably going to be a tough cookie to sign if the Maple Leafs are not able to get that Matthews deal done either. Now, I don't want to go out there and assume that it's 100% a given that Matthews is going to go to Arizona. Let's assume for a bit that he sticks around in Toronto, maybe with a little bit of an increase in pay. All of a sudden, does that make Nylander the odd man out? I think that this idea makes sense, but my question to you is, do you think it's going to happen? Do you think it's more likely that the Maple Leafs focus on Matthews and Bunting before Nylander and eventually trade Nylander, sometime even before the 2023-2024 season begins? If there's any doubt at all, any in the slightest, that the Matthews conversation is going to go as easy as you want it to go, then there has to be some sort of a move. You can't lose Austin Matthews in the same way that Calgary lost Johnny Gaudreau. The world would implode and turn inside out if that's the case. If Matthews pulls a Gaudreau, like we talked about in the video a few months ago, that's probably, like, one of the craziest videos we've ever made. Like, it's one of the top viewed videos on the channel, too. If this goes down, and he actually does go to Vegas or San Jose or LA or whatever, then you're kind of in a bad spot if you're Kyle Dubas, and your job may not be the most secure heading into the next few years after that. So, let me know in the comments, what are your opinions about this entire thing here? Is Nylander the odd man out? Do you think there's going to be any difficulty in the slightest to re-sign Austin Matthews? And does that make Nylander a lot more of an easier conversation to have instead? Do you think even if you get Matthews re-signed, there's going to be room to get Willie under contract? Or do you place Michael Bunting above Nylander on that list of, let's just say, needs? Maslow's hierarchy. Okay, no, we're not going to talk about that. But either way, let me know in the comments like your thoughts. I'll leave a link in the description, as we said, to the Darren Dreger audio hit, as well as to the NHL rumors page. Do you think that Nylander is playing to a point where he is as worthy of let's say $10.9 million as Mitch Marner is, do you think he is going to get that $5 million pay increase? Or do you think he's probably somewhere worth in the nine-ish, $9.5 million range? He's been very good this season, so I could totally understand if you're on the boat that he's sort of approaching that Marner territory in terms of his progression and development. I'm personally really happy to see it. Like, I was always a big fan of Nylander, and I loved seeing how good and talented he was in the SHL before he came over, but... Seeing what happened with him, with all the trade rumors over the years, the scrutiny, the ice time, the deployment, Babcock, etc. over the years, it's kind of cathartic seeing Nylander be as good as he is right now as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs. And it probably is going to set him up with a pretty big payday because of it. But you can let me know in the comments your thoughts about Nylander and his future with the Leafs. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.